Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the Carve Vanguard OCG format once more. And this will be the last one I do for the current format as at the end of this week the Shadow Paladin trial deck comes out. And even though it's just a trial deck, I do feel like that the Shadow Paladin Boner alone is going to cause it to see a good amount of play. And most hilariously enough, it'll somehow manage to get a top before Aqua Force does. That's my bold prediction. Shadow Paladins with just our trial deck will be able to score top than before Aqua Force does, and maybe even get more tops than Mega Colony too. Like, do not underestimate the power of the Ren Boner. Like, if there's anything I've learned from observing this game, is that Shadow Paladins, Link Joker, Gear Chronicle, Royal Paladin, and Kagura will always, always see a good amount of play, even if like they're not at like the most optimal deck of the format. So, that being said. What else can I say before going into this? Oh, right. Uh, for the people who like to read my reviews of Vanguard V, the episode 15 review will not be up immediately on Saturday like it usually... You know, okay, not so much as immediately, but it won't be up Saturday evening like it normally would be. Instead, it'll be up on Sunday evening or Monday, as I'll be out of town this weekend for regionals for Yu-Gi-Oh! and Winnipeg, and as such, watching Vanguard V will be the first thing on my mind at that time. So, that being said, let's get into this. So, we only have two tournaments to talk about today, but one is a single-person tournament. So, I feel like these results we can take with a bit more validity than, say, some of the team ones where you see a deck that manages to get top, but it was hard carry by its teammates. So, we have the first Miyagi VGCS, standard, 34 players. First and second place are Oracle Think Tank. Third is Cogro. Fourth is Dimension Please. And then fifth to eighth in this order are Grand Blue, Dimension Please, OTT, and Royals. The clan breakdown was eight Cogro, seven Aqua Force, none of which topped. Six Grand Blue, four DP, four OTT, three Royal Paladin, one Tachis, and one Spikes. So, okay, granted, this was a 34 player tournament, but only four Oracle Think Tanks were present, and three of them got top eight. Holy shit! And if you look at the, this is pretty much where the builds are starting to go to now. You're running 11 grade threes. You're not even playing the grade two that counter blasts to attack on attack, draw a card, discard, and scry one. You're just playing a Promised Daughter, Mimi, and some number of Battlesis Tort. And it's really just your grade ones. Like if you want to play a higher amount of Luck Birds or you want to play some Geminis, uh, yep, like uh, that's where or Oracle Think Tank are going. And then you've got, of course, Cogger, like. Uh, Kagro, I feel like it's just going to be a good deck for quite some time. Like, uh, like you got Novell coming up too. Like, Kagro, even though there isn't as much in this tournament, I still feel like they are the second best deck in the format. And then the third place team, the fourth place deck list is not present, but it is Dimension Please. Dimension Please and Grand Blue are again fighting out for the last slot in tier one. I do believe that Grand Blue is doing just a little bit better than Dimension Police for, due to just being inherently more consistent. Dimension Police is a bit more of a high roll deck, but uh, they're still, in my opinion, in like, I think based on results, doing better than Spikes and Tachis. Like, at least that's what I think is going on here. So then we have the Kishiwada VGCS standard 38 teams. First place, Spikes, Kagura, Oracle, Think Tank. Second place, OTT, Dimension Place, Grand Blue. Third place, Dimension Place, Kagura, OTT. Fourth place, Grand Blue, Kagura, and OTT. First place team, we had Spikes going 6 2, Kagura 5 3, and Oracle, Think Tank went 5 2 and a draw. Uh, second place was OTT 6 and 2, Dimension Place 6 and 2, and Grand Blue unknown uh, is this the build i wanted to talk about yes i think that's the one so we're gonna just open that another tab because i want to highlight that build for a second here and then the grand blue list uh yeah i've been thinking about going to the build that just cuts evil shade entirely and just runs four of the ghosty to just turbo mill and then third place dimension please six two kagura unknown oracle think tank seven and one and it's also the standard build that runs basically only Amaterasu and, and Imperial Daughter as your counter blasters. So, what's the thing I wanted to talk about here? Right, so the dimension, this Dimension Please list, I think this is the one that's playing a greater amount of draws. Yeah, so there's like a Dimension Please list flowing around that runs less crits and more draws. And the idea is very similar to what Kagro is currently doing in that they're playing a higher number of draws in order to draw their draw into their win con faster. In this case, it's Great Dayusha because Dimension Please wins by Great Dayusha chaining. So what if you're inherently, if you're not sac crit sacking your opponent as much through trigger checks? Because the thing is, normal Dayusha and Laurel already provide crit advantage. So 
you can cut down on the number of base crits you already have in your trigger lineup and make and have these draws that let you keep up a hand, dig for your win con, and you're playing four, so you can all you can still guard, protect, and excel lanes with the 5k shields that you would normally need. Like, like wow, I cannot speak, but you can basically guard force and excel lanes easier with 5k shields compared to force and excel, which need to use 10 or 15 shields to guard equal lanes. So it's a it's solid theory, and if I actually liked Dimension Police, I'd consider it. But obviously, no. Like I honest, I still hate that clan. But in any case, that's this is pretty much where the current format is ending until with with Shadows on the Horizon. So TLDR, Oracle Tank Tank is the best deck in the format, followed by Kagro. Grand Blue, I feel like is just slightly ahead of Dimension Police with a few more tops under its belt, but these are mostly teams, and then again, that's what this format has pretty much been, teams. Then you've got Dimension Police bringing it up. After that, you've got Spikes and Tachikaze. Then, what was it? We've had Royal Paladins, a decent amount of play, followed by, uh, I think, Mega Colony and Nova Crowther have had similar numbers. And then Dead Last is Aqua Force. They are still yet to get a top at a major tournament, like... Nobody cares about small 10-person local tournaments. So I'm, I'm talking about like these things. And we have yet to see Aqua Force do jack-all. And it's only going to get worse when the new set drops because Shadow Paladins are coming in, Dimension, uh, DI are coming in, and we got two more XL clans coming to the fold. And both Murakumo and Pale Moon look like they're going to just be better. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is Boostar899, jacking out.